So good evening, everyone, and welcome to Libre Drawn and Quarterly's virtual event series. I'm Mara, and on behalf of DNQ, I thank you all for joining us as we welcome Idem Awumi for the launch of the English translation of his novel, Mina Among the Shadows. Joining Adam tonight will be translators Phyllis Aronoff and Howard Scott, and guest moderator Nigel, H. Nigel Thomas. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to recognize that our publishing offices and bookstores are located on the unceded territory of the Kanekehaga. While many of us refer to Montreal as our home, it is named Chachake, and we are grateful that creating and sharing stories has been a part of this land for thousands of years. We urge you to seek out stories that are different from your own. And hey, Thank you all so much for supporting local independent bookstores like ours. It's because of your support that we can continue to offer free events like this one. In case you didn't know, we also host nine different digital book clubs for young readers and adults. You can find them on our Facebook page and website. Please feel free to write your questions in the Q&A box found at the bottom of your screen at any time during the event. The chat is also available for you to express any thoughts you may have. Ida Mawumi was born in Lomé, Togo, and currently lives in Gatineau, Quebec. Descent in tonight, the English translation of his novel, Explication de la Nuit, expertly translated by our other panelists tonight, Phyllis and Howard, won the prestigious Governor General's Award for Translation in 2018. His other novels are Port Melo, which won the Grand, Grand Prix Littéraire d'Afrique Noire, Les Pieds Sales, which was a finalist for the Prix Goncourt in France, and whose English translation, Dirty Feet, was selected for the International Impact Dublin Literary Award and Rose Deluge. Phyllis Aronoff, a Montrealer born and bred, translates from French to English solo or with co-translator Howard Scott. She has translated novels, short stories, poetry, memoirs, and works on history, anthropology, literary criticism, and philosophy by authors from Quebec and France. Her translations have won several prizes, including, including the Jewish Book Award for Fiction. Howard Scott was born in southwestern Ontario, but he fell in love with Montreal in his 20s and has lived there ever since. He translates novels, nonfiction, and poetry, often with co-translator Phyllis Aronoff. In 1997, he won the Governor General's Literary Award for Translation for The Eugelian by Luki Berzianik. Together, Phyllis and Howard have received the Quebec Writers' Federation Translation Award, as well as the Governor General's Literary Award mentioned previously. H. Nigel Thomas was born in St. Vincent and immigrated to Canada, arriving in Montreal in 1968. His published works include the novels Behind the Face of Winter and Return to Arcadia, and the short story collections Lives Whole and Otherwise, and When the Bottom Falls Out. He also edited Why We Write, a collection of conversations with African-Canadian poets and novelists, and has a new poetry collection forthcoming. He received the Homage to Artist Award from Laval University in 2013. Welcome, Nigel, to begin to the screen. Well, thank you very much, Mauro. It's a, it's a lovely presentation. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, moderating this discussion on uh, Idem Awume's uh, work, Mina Among the Shadows, so expertly translated by Phyllis Aronoff and Howard Scott. And without any further ado, uh, Phyllis, I invite you to read a selection of the novel. Thank you. This uh, little passage that I'm going to read is near the beginning of the novel, but not quite at the beginning. The taxi driver who brought, I can't see well. Hmm. The, the taxi driver who brought me back to my suburb had the immaculate beard of a patriarch. We drove through a working class neighborhood where there were songs of praise bursting forth, amplified by echoes, disturbing even the gods of the falling night. The driver said he lived in the area and had to fight to get to sleep at night because the walls of his humble abode vibrated to the pulse of the hymns. At dawn, when he finally managed to get out a first snore, the Mwesens call to prayer would send him leaping out of bed, wishing his weary carcass could be projected far from this neighborhood, which he said was cursed. And when he gave up and took refuge inside his taxi in a vacant lot, hookers would come and knock on the windows, cackling, you want company, granddad? For you, it'll be love at half price. The man pounded his steering wheel. It's revolting. Either they pursue you armed with psalms when you're half asleep, or they proposition you. People said there were miracles in these sheds, overheated by the live flames of faith, 
Assembly line healings reported by the converted paralytics who regained their mobility and smashed the wheelchairs on which their asses and their stumps had long been resting. Countless numbers of the blind who regained their sight. Sterile women who began filling their yards with armies of vigorous bawling brats. Unfortunates of every kind who found riches, luck, and love. Formerly impotent men who were no longer able to calm down their once flaccid members, which now maintained an impressive horizontal position. And since heaven despises the ungrateful, they had to go back to the temple to give thanks with gifts and praise. You could even order miracles of any magnitude according to the number you wrote on the check to the order of the pastor. My driver said that apart from the muezzin who drove him crazy at dawn, there was less racket in the mosques. They pray more quietly there, he said, but just as intensely. And he didn't have a problem with that. He had indeed heard that there were new imams making powerful speeches, drawing crowds that grew from week to week. And he couldn't complain because at those sacred hours of prayer, his taxi was taken by storm by the faithful. The taxi stopped at a red light. I looked toward the sidewalk and my eyes met those of the hunchback named Matakli, the Dionysus who had been pacing the streets of the port for 20 years. Matakli dragging in one hand a filthy canvas bag in which he deposited various objects he picked up in the city. People said Matakli was jinxed, that he was the representation of the madness or better the anger of the gods in our part of the world. And that anyone who crossed his path could expect the worst misfortune. He stopped on the sidewalk facing the window I had rolled down and swore through his teeth, spewing into the night a litany of obscure words. And if I were superstitious, I would have said to myself that my search for Mina was going to be difficult or worse, that what I was going to find at the end of all this would be horrible, monstrous. Matakli spat to the side and then started walking again when the light turned green. The taxi began moving again, driving through the streets where I had lingered with the little sister, her arm in mine as we strolled in the port or other parts of the country. Like the time five years earlier when we went up north together and in a town in the vicinity of La Savanne, we came across an old man playing a four string ngoni, his eyes half closed. It's him, the griot Asangelawa, Mina said. The griot interpreting a piece he had composed in a language that was unknown to us, but whose beauty struck us powerfully. Asangelawa, his face radiant, surrounded by an enthralled crowd. Caught up in the song, Mina took a few steps into the circle of dancers, her feet raising dust, the earth vibrating. Thank you very much, uh, Phyllis. Um, that was lovely. And now we turn to you, Edom, and we would be discussing this wonderful book with you. Um, my very first question, uh, take, uh, you know, looks at the relationship between Mina and the country. And one could read Mina as the human embodiment of the healthy attributes of the country called the empire in which the novel is set. In looking for Mina, Karim, the protagonist, seems to be searching for his country and himself. And I would like you to comment on that. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for having me this evening. Uh, thank you. Uh, what I can say, uh, I can say that uh, Mina, it's, uh, it's fairly, uh, it's a fairly uh, marginal uh, character in a country where people uh, marked by uh, a harsh reality uh, made up of uh, misery and violence and uh, feel as though looked up. Uh, Nina speaks where many people uh, prefer to remain uh, silent. Uh, she refuses to be uh, bombarded uh, by churches or prophets, uh, merchants of uh, fine words, who hold uh, uh, the fat fool uh, in hostage. So Mina uh, simply wants to, to live uh, according to her own choices and, and desires. Uh, and, and we can say that uh, in seeking 
her in this difficult, tough country, uh, Kerim, the narrator uh, is in search of, can say the meaning of his own freedom. Um, the country, uh, what I call the empire, because it is, it is, not, it is, it is not actually uh, a democracy. Uh, it is a, de a democracy on paper, but the reality, I mean, is, is different. Uh, so yeah, this country, it's a little bit like Mina, uh, complex, difficult to grasp, uh, full of uh, disillusion and for hope too. Very good. Uh, Phyllis and Howard, um, this is the second book that you've translated for uh, Edom. And it's, it's quite clear that you enjoy his work. Now, what attracts you to Edom's works? You well, well. First of all, we, you know, we didn't, we didn't know him before the, uh, before the the book was, the first book was uh, proposed to us by Mwenzi House, but of course we mm -hmm. fell in love with it right away, and we jumped at the chance to uh, to translate a second book. Of course, uh, it's it's uh, it's wonderful to like immerse ourselves in a in a in a country we don't know at the same time as. as uh, as working on, you know, with very nice, beautiful writing. I had to do quite a bit of research to <laughs> learn learn a bit about Togo. Okay. Never been to South to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, okay. of course. And um, Togo is actually has like a, a population comparable to Quebec, although it's a much smaller landmass. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, in a sense, you sort of uh, anticipated what my second question, but I'll, I'll come to that. I return to you, Karim. Um, why did you choose um, to make the narrator protagonist a photographer? <laughs> you know, it's uh, maybe it's an, an old dream. Uh, it's uh, maybe an expression of uh, a failure, my failure, maybe. So uh, I, I choose a photographer. Uh, because certainly uh, I would have liked to be simply a photographer, uh, to have the talent to, uh, to convey in an uh, image uh, the meaning of a gaze, of, uh, of a scene, uh, of a life. Um, uh, uh, maybe uh, it's uh, more difficult than writing books where you have uh, more, more space, more, more feel, for example. Uh, but above all, I chose a photographer uh, because um, I needed uh, a character who could move around, uh, you know, uh, go on the road for a goal, uh, 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 for a goal uh, to, to, to capture, to, to question people, uh, uh, glances, and, and uh, in a certain way, uh, a character who can run behind beauty. Mm -hmm. um, which also allows me to, uh, to ask the question of the weight of our uh, artistic approaches in, in relation to reality. And in the novel, um, Mina will reproach Karim for having taken refuge in the photo uh, to escape reality, uh, to escape the variance of, uh, of the streets. Very good. And uh, it's very interesting because uh, in your novel, I've read some of the most striking cinematic passages that I've ever encountered in fiction. So quite clearly, um, you, that eye for detail of the photographer is very much present in the novel. Yeah. Um, I, okay. I think it was interesting that, it, that, that the camera he used is, a, is an old Nikon. Exactly. Yes. He's, trying, he's trying to reconnect with his past, with, with Mina in the old days. That he, he inherited is. from his father. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, who plays the role of a sort of like a chorus in the novel, you know, putting yeah. certain aspects of reality in the foreground. Okay, my next question is for you, uh, Kareem. Um, Adam. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> 
I don't, I don't wish <laughs> that. No, that's interesting. Very interesting. Well, we um, had that experience too of, of when we were when we were uh, translating it. We kept yeah. thinking of Adam when it was when it was. <laughs> I think that was the question. Are Adam and Kareem uh, the same person? So that's. These are not a debate, so. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, great. Um, you, you use the shadow, l'ombre, uh, as a character in the novel. And obviously it keeps shifting shape. And I'm curious to, understand, to, to find out from you why you use such a rhetorical device. Go ahead. Okay, oh, thank you. Uh, I can say that. Uh... A few uh, reasons. So let me to, to imagine the, the shadow uh, figure in this novel. Uh, it is first for me, it is first of all because uh, uh, we are in a, a certain a, a violent context, uh, a roughless mm -hmm. context. Uh, uh, so it's first to also to recall uh, the sword of violence uh, which hangs over uh, people's heads. Uh, also because uh, justice uh, in this country uh, rarely uh, uh, punish uh, the, the, the real uh, culprits. Um, uh, the, the shadow has uh, somewhat uh, become uh, one that uh, does uh, justice finally for, for the poorest. But it is also uh, true that uh, the people in this novel uh, disillusioned and tired, uh, I mean, exhausted, also uh, uh, become uh, the, the shadow of themselves. And finally, um, because the shadow uh, bears name like uh, Eshu or Shango, mm -hmm. I mean, it is a way of uh, summoning infection. Uh, there's, uh, there's divinities uh, of the black uh, continent that have uh, almost been forgotten uh, during, uh, during decades of colonization mm -hmm. and cultural uh, alienation. Very good, excellent. Um, in connection with that as well, um, you do have the flies that are omnipresent. And um, I found that quite intriguing. Um, I have my own uh, interpretations of that, but I'm much more interested in, in knowing yours. Why did you uh, have those flies there all over the place? Yeah. I think it's a little fantasy. No, just because, you know, I'm uh, a, a fan of uh, Jean-Paul Sartre's books, uh, Le, uh, Le Mouche. Le Mouche, okay. I, I do love uh, Jean-Paul Sartre and Albert Camus uh, too. Uh, but uh, in specifically in this read, in this novel, uh, uh, flies. Uh, so I choose for flies as an expression of uh, I think uh, uh, maybe uh, a routine co country. It is relevant. So uh, I like first I like your reading. Uh, uh, so uh, in this tough country. Uh, uh, I choose fly, uh, so it, it is a way of rendering uh, this atmosphere of noises, movements, and smells. Uh, a fly is as a metaphor for, for movement, uh, for life, uh, in a context where uh, there is an obvious lack of freedom. Okay. Uh, there are perhaps... Uh, 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 Beside me now, uh, the only character in this fiction uh, that uh, the power, uh, the political power, the army uh, cannot control. It, it is also uh, a desire to, to take flight, uh, but also uh, a reminder of this past where Mina and Kerim were part of uh, Le Théâtre des Mouches, when they were uh, younger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Very I good. also uh, I wanted to say something about the flies <laughs> because they, they come in, they yeah. add a lot of humor too. And they come in at times when people are, are misbehaving, you know, either seriously or, or, you know, in trivial ways. 
but uh, but suddenly they're attacked by huge uh, <laughs> masses of flies, and that's that's a, a kind of a that's a nice little touch that that we yeah. enjoyed. Like the like the policeman trying to direct direct traffic, and then the flies come, and he's like waving his arms. Which... <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> or or uh, uh, at the time when they're try they're trying to evict the squatters. Um, at that particular yeah. moment when they're at the police station. That's, that's, that's yeah, all of, yeah, wonderful. Um, I, and what you're still talking, so I'm going to address my next question to both of you. Um, this novel is informed by uh, West African ontology. Um, and Howard, you began talking about it where you spoke about the, uh, the research that you did um, did it pose any sort of challenges for you linguistically, Phyllis and Howard? Well, we had had to do some research on all these. Uh, I mean, there, there's the clash of the religions in the book. There's the, uh, okay. the traditional African religions, and there's a, a long list of uh, of, of uh, traditional gods. Plus, you have the Christianity and and Islam, which have which have been imported, and and they're. Uh, Especially Islam is a very strong factor in the book. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say that yeah. uh, uh, so you did a great job. You know, uh, for you for sure, uh, this was like uh, 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 like I think a challenging trip uh, to Africa. And uh, I read uh, uh, Mina Among the Shadows because uh, personally, uh, uh, once my book is published in French, for sure. Uh, I do not read it again because <laughs> I I, be, I become very really frustrated because I can okay okay I can do this better etc cetera, etc cetera, but I did read uh, Mina among the shadow and I can say that okay we can feel uh, the, the, the the noises the colors uh, uh, the smells yeah, that's uh, it's a very uh, um, a good piece of um, uh, translation. Thank you for that. That's, that's very you. good to hear because that was one of the things, it wasn't so much the question of the ontology for that I found <laughs> difficult. It was the question of sort of not having a, not having been there, not having seen the mm -hmm. way people move their bodies, the way they, yeah. the way the food smells, the way the air feels, okay. but you described it very well, Adam. So. I think that's true. It's true. I, you know, we got a little bit of a sense of it, but that was for me, that was the hardest thing, I think, of, you know, translating a, a culture that's, that's so unfamiliar to me and that all the research I do, I'm, I'm sort of like, um, I'm sort of like Karen, I'm at one remove, I'm not in that reality, I have that, that lens separating me, but, I, but it was a wonderful experience to, 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 to feel it that way. Yeah, wonderful. And that's a perfect segue for the next question. Um, you touch Edom on a contemporary issue uh, in West Africa, the attempt to impose Salafism, uh, that extreme version of Islam uh, in those countries where Islam is uh, significantly present. Uh, the narrative, your novel, pre um, presents a battle between Christianity and Islam for dominance, and the indigenous religions are somewhat um, marginalized. In fact, Mina says that um, they've actually eaten up. They, uh, they, the gods of Christianity and Islam have uh, eaten up the gods of, uh, of West Africa. Uh, I would like you to comment on that uh, because that's it's an essential, it's a key component of the novel. Oh, it's a tough, it's a, thank you. It's a tough question. I uh, thank you for, for that. Uh, but I just want to say first that uh, this uh, this book, this novel is not really about uh, um, Salafi, Salafism or these or those other uh, religious movements. Uh, it's also, it, it is the, the, the decor, uh, the atmosphere. And, I want to say that you know, I come from a, a continent where, uh, at the time of colonization, and even now, uh, our ancestors uh, were told that their religions uh, were those of the, the devil. Uh, mm -hmm. 
a colonization which has taken from from us not only uh, a good part of our culture but also and it is terrible uh, the confidence in who we are and have today. So Mina among the shadow uh, drew the, few, the figure of uh, the shadow which bears uh, the, the names of African gods like Eshu or Shango or Sapate, uh, who are Orisas uh, in the Brazilian side. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is a way of returning to his uh, gods, uh, to this pride uh, that is necessary to find or to refine. But uh, it must uh, be said that uh, the, the, the various evangelical churches that are growing like mushrooms in Africa, even in Brazil, uh, uh, suffering on uh, the destitution uh, uh, of the people uh, uh, do not help in, in this. So, uh, and there is also uh, uh, this uh, radical Islam where in the mosques, uh, a world is served with itself also uh, in closes, uh, em embraces. So Mina says, after uh, uh, our old, uh, she says uh, in, in the novel, uh, after our old uh, masters from, uh, from West, rare are those from the East. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can say that between the, the two, uh, Africans are still looking for, for a way. But I'm a little confident. I'm confident because um, even if, for the most part, uh, the new generation uh, do not practice African uh, religions, uh, we observe uh, as a movement of uh, conscience. Uh, we understand that uh, it is a part of our heritage, our, uh, our wealth, in fact. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, Can I, I, I wanted to say okay. also that, that uh, there, there are so many wonderful younger people in the book and, and, and rebellious older people. I mean, it's just uh, artists and, 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 and young people doing, you know, poetry and, uh, and graffiti. Uh, that's, a, I mean, it seems to me that that's a very hopeful spirit. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not only Nina. People are re rebelling in ways that they that they find ways. Uh, yeah, like the, the the young graffiti artist who uh, borrows from uh, Jacques Prévert. Oh yeah, I like Jacques Prévert. <laughs> Tricky for translation. Oh, that was a killer to translate in him. <laughs> and then there were you know the women at the squad who defied the army, face face down the army. Yeah, so throughout photography or the, the graffitis, you know. Uh, uh, the approach, uh, the goal is, is to, uh, to bring uh, another speech, another discourse, uh, 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 to try to, 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 to beat uh, uh, those speech uh, uh, that are served in uh, the mosque or uh, in the churches, for, for example. So, mm -hmm. Well, you, you also need a force against the likes of uh, Tony Bazooka, you know, who is there to enforce the will of the regime. Uh, and so on. So that's uh, that's the the spirit of M Mina is encapsulated in that that sort of resistance, mm -hmm. which is quite 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 good. Okay, um, we could move then to talk a bit about how your books are received in West Africa. Um, what is your audience like in West Africa? <laughs> oh, you know, it's a tough question. I'm, I'm a little, uh, uh, I'm lost, uh, and I'm, I feel uh, uh, guilty. So, but uh, first, I want to say that uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the book uh, that are published in North America, I think, uh, circulates less in Africa. Uh, you okay. know. If you publish in, in Paris, it's easier to uh, to be uh, to be to be read to be uh, distributed in, in Africa. That's because there is uh, 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 some uh, partnership between uh, 
uh, uh, European publishers and, and, and African uh, publishers, for example. Better, better distribution, right? Yeah, yeah, better distribution. So, yeah. but there are people, uh, you know, who sometimes uh, send me uh, messages to say uh, that uh, they have read and understood to say that uh, they define maybe de themselves in, in this or that aspect of, of the story. Uh, uh, to say also that uh, they have uh, questions for me, for example. So, and uh, from time to time, it is interesting to have this little uh, dialogue throughout uh, messenger or, uh, or, or um, WhatsApp with those people. Right. Uh, uh, but uh, I can say that this, dialogue is not very constant because the books circulate less there and for sure obviously we have to 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 fight i think to to develop partnerships with with, with publishers with books sellers and, and libraries uh, uh, there so to provide i think a, a better solution to the circulation of of books yeah Mm -hmm. well, we probably actually... uh, travelers that that carry that bring people who go back and forth carry books because they like the, the character in the book of course Karim mm -hmm. regularly mm -hmm. brings books from Montreal to to uh, to the city in uh, in in the fictional country which is Togo. <laughs> Oh yeah, for sure. Well, <laughs> oh well, yeah, yeah. I almost for, forgot this aspect of the novel. You know, I mean, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, should should you say that the fictional country is Togo? I would I would say that it it's it resembles a lot of West African countries, including yeah. the Anglophone ones. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, you for know. Sure. So okay. I would I I would say I agree with yeah. you, Karim. No. That you sorry, <laughs> Eden. <laughs> That, that you name the that you don't give the country a specific name because honestly, mm -hmm. uh, it could be Ghana. It yeah. could be yeah. yeah you know uh, which is one of yeah. the the often seen as one of the more uh, liberal and more uh, progressive countries and yet mm -hmm. many of the characteristics in uh, the empire you will find in a place like Ghana for example. Yeah. 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 And there, there are a couple specific, specific uh, geographical references that that I think place it. Well, in. well the port, the, the port, the <laughs> port, the national yes. monument. The port, yeah, the port and Lomo. Yes. Yeah, so, and the yeah. German wharf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah. you know, I, I, I kind of objected because I, I do the same sort of thing, and um, and and I insist that. Uh, St. Vincent, mm -hmm. for example, is mm -hmm. not the island I'm writing about <laughs> when I use Isabella okay. Island. So that's why I come jump quickly to uh, Karim's defense. Uh, okay. I, we have time for, at, I think, yeah. at least one more question. And, um, and which one should I ask? How, how do you see your relationship uh, between yourself and your audience? Okay. Oh my God! Uh, it's also another <laughs> tough question. Um, okay. For me, uh, I think uh, the, the audience it's uh, it's still a bit of mystery, uh, and uh, and so uh, and so much the, the better. Uh, the, the public uh, the, the public uh, is people with their uh, shadows and light. You know, uh, there are those of Africa who read me, and who. Uh, Perhaps uh, find themselves uh, in, in the in the story of Mina and, and Karim, and they perhaps uh, find their dreams, uh, their hopes uh, uh, there. Um, and there, there uh, are also those of Europe, of uh, a continent that never ends with uh, the the gods of uh, colonization. So, and there is the uh, American. There's also so the American continent who where I choose to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to live, which uh, with uh, its um, history of uh, conquest, colonization too, its ghost and shadows too. So to to write is also a way to to create a place of. Uh, 
a place for confrontation of, for these shadows. Uh, there are those who are curious uh, and who wants to, to discover uh, Mina's story. Uh, those who are already uh, living, living it. Those who may be uh, shaken by these in their convictions, for example. And finally, those who are simply uh, passionate, really, about, uh, about literature. Yeah. Right. Um, maybe, I should, maybe I should direct this a little bit more specifically. Je vais le poser en français, comme ça, que je vais comprendre. Um, est-ce que, est que ça affecte ton style, par exemple? Okay. Does it affect your style? Mm -hmm. Oh, not, no, 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 not really, you know, because uh, uh, um, uh, it's very, uh, 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 it's a gift to have uh, uh, some uh, audience, pe pe people who follow you, for example. But, you know, when I start a novel, uh, I try to not to do not think about uh, uh, this public uh, because for me uh, writing is also an uh, as I as I said also an experience of of freedom of uh, of liberty and I try to uh, um, uh, to be uh, very uh, free free uh, uh, stay myself uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and stay stick to my dream when I. Uh, when, when I write, and uh, uh, because uh, uh, my conviction is, uh, 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 despite, despite the fact that you know, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm talking about maybe uh, about Africa, about Latin, about Canada, for example, and Europe. Uh, 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 I think for sure those stories are universal, you know. Uh, uh, and, uh, do, and uh, saying that, I remember uh, what uh, Miguel Toga from uh, uh, Portugal said one day. In French, he said, l'universal, l'universel, c'est le local, moi les murs. So uh, I try to, uh, uh, to stay uh, 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 as close as possible uh, uh, to my, 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 my dreams, my vision, for example. Yeah, the universal is certainly in the local for sure. I, there is another great writer who said exactly that, uh, something similar. Lamson uh -huh. Hughes, by the way, said oh, something yeah. very quite similar. Um, okay, um, we have a couple of questions, and uh, the very first one is. Um, what are the advantages in approaching the work of an author for the second time? So I guess that question is for Phyllis and Howard. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, it's always uh, easier in a way. Yeah, when, once you know an author, you, uh, it's familiar territory in a way. Yeah. I mean, there's other authors we've translated, uh, you know, several books and it's like uh, you, you, um, you really get to know the author that way. Yeah, I, I have to say that I found this book. Um, well, I sort of feel that when we translate a book, we're we're living inside the author's head. So it's very funny sometimes when I, you know, when I meet a, an author, then but I feel like I know them. But it's really I know the writer, but the author that I have in front of me is not quite the writer. It's. Uh, but when you get it, and so that's a, that's a funny thing that that happens when you when you translate, I think. Um, and then with the second book is you you sort of feel that you 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 know the inside of that brain a little bit, or you think you do. Um, and this I have to say that the first book was, in some ways, it was harder. It was emotionally harder because the yeah. Or the subject because the the events in it were it was painful it was painful to live in in that in that world for you know for the months that we were translating it um and this one is is in a way well it's more mixed there are more different people in it and uh it will seem to me more hopeful i don't know if i'm misinterpreting uh adam yeah. 
I, I, re I love this book. I really, really oh, love you. this book. <laughs> <laughs> when we translated the second book, we already had an opportunity to meet Adam in person. Whereas mm -hmm. the first book, we, <laughs> we hadn't met him at all. It's always good if you can meet an author with you you're translating, but it's, it's not always possible. Okay, yeah. very good. Fortunately, yeah, we, 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 we met before the, the, this pandemic. Huh? So, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Pandemic, you know. Yeah, for well, sure. It's yeah. <laughs> um, there is a fairly long statement here that is complimenting you. I'll read the statement. Thank you for this wonderful book. It is beautiful. And then the question follows, uh, which in, a, in part you've already answered. I am very curious, especially in the context of translation, when you write, who do you imagine is your audience? Uh, I think, and the, the, quest, the part of the question that I think is interesting is your novel feels both local and international. Mm -hmm. Ton alors, uh, uh, une allure internationale et même aussi locale. Aimerais-tu oh, yes. le commenter? Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. I think uh, for me, uh, uh, writing, li literature is about uh, sharing something, uh, sharing uh, uh, my souvenirs, uh, uh, what, I, what, what I got from my, uh, my native land. So, and, you know, uh, if I consider my uh, my little story, my uh, uh, yeah, you know, uh, for me inside me, I think there is uh, three uh, uh, three universes, three three uh, three uh, these three continents. I mean, Africa, uh, where I grew up, and Europe, uh, uh, where I sp where I spent uh, five five long years and then uh, North America. And so uh, uh, these, and in my novels, you know, uh, there is uh, um, constantly, uh, 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 this, uh, uh, there is a relation between uh, these, uh, uh, these three, uh, the, these three uh, uh, continents, these three areas. So, yeah. And that's why, uh, so because uh, I'm from this, uh, uh, this history, uh, because I'm from this colonized country, because, I'm, uh, uh, because uh, Europe, it's also uh, a part of, uh, of my story. Uh, and now, as I said, I choose to live in North America. Uh, definitely uh, uh, my literature, uh, uh, it's a bit, uh, Pretentious uh, to say that, but my literature is also yeah, about you know uh, uh, being. Uh, it's about uh, to 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 contribute uh, to this uh, uh, universality uh, uh, and trying to share something uh, in terms of in terms of dream, in terms of hope, in terms of uh, 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 the fact to stay uh, um, uh, to stay. Uh, awake and fight for, for, for more freedom. Yeah. Very good. Wait. And we, we certainly see when, you know, when we, when we read the book uh, the, the, that your literary references are, are, are international there, you know, they're, I mean, you're, you're, you belong to, in a way you, you're drawing on so many different cultures. You have Eastern Europe, Western Europe, uh, North American, uh, you know, as well as the, as uh, African writers that you cite. Yeah. So I don't know how you managed to do all that reading, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's just really, I mean, it's wonderful to, to have that richness in a book. Oh, thank you. Uh, definitely, uh, uh, apart from Togo, literature was my, uh, my second, uh, uh, my second uh, nation, my second uh, uh, republic. Uh, and uh, there is another uh, reason, reason who, uh, that explains the reason why I chose North America. Uh, um, yeah, for sure, uh, uh, the goal was to experience another culture, another area, uh, uh, to, to, to continue my trip. But uh, as I said uh, in a, a previous uh, uh, interview in French, 
uh, I did read uh, when I uh, was uh, younger. Uh, uh, these uh, uh, American, Black American uh, authors from the movement of the Harlem Renaissance. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Langston Weeks, Conti Cullen, Claude McKay, James Baldwin, uh, The Fire Next Time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was in Africa when I uh, uh, read the, the, these books in Africa. So Banjo, The Fire Next Time. Uh, in, uh, Think of uh, this book too uh, from uh, Zora Niels Walston. Uh, mm -hmm. I forgot. Oh, I forgot the, the title. So, in Africa, I was young in Africa, and but these books, uh, these uh, stories, uh, uh, were also my reality. You know, uh, so that's the reason why my approach is definitely uh, uh, universal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. Book, books are important in the book, in the in, in the in the novel. <laughs> There's Karine that, that, who brings books back from Montreal, and then there's also Mina has has a book has her bookstore where she yeah. and she and she passes out books to the little kids to, to give them uh, some some uh, culture from elsewhere. Yeah, and, and, she, and she's even subversive. She takes it into the heart of um, Salim Bak's um, house, yes. where right. all, he doesn't want any Western influences, and she. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, wonderful. Uh, but there is also a rich uh, classical tradition as well. I was just, I was saying, my goodness, he, you, you are so erudite, you know, all the Greek and Roman gods that keep coming up and you can see it really, from a point of view of um, religion, there is that breath, huge breaths, you know, people have taken their inspiration from all over the place to form their gods. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, really wonderful. Yes. Uh, let me see, there, there is a third question from our audience. Okay. Um, the question is, um, I find that the bookstore plays an interesting role in the novel. Can you comment on the role of value of the bookstore in the novel? Um, le rôle que joue alors le librairie dans le, dans le roman, le librairie de, de Mina. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. So uh, uh, the role for yeah, the, the bookstore in uh, the novel. Uh, I think for, for Mina, uh, okay. Uh, uh, Having this uh, uh, bookstore in uh, this poor, poor neighborhood, uh, it's a, it's a way to to give something to uh, these um, to the young uh, generation, to these uh, um, uh, small kids uh, uh, for uh, from uh, poor fa families who doesn't who don't have any occasion to uh, to read books or to to buy uh, uh, some books, for example. So. Uh, uh, the, the, the bookstore, uh, for me, uh, in this context, uh, it's, a, it's a specific place, uh, a place to, to take the, the, the time to, to, to reflect, to think about, uh, uh, about, uh, uh, about uh, the, 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 the situation in, in this country, to think about, uh, uh, about freedom. And uh, as I said, um, uh, people are not really free in this in this country, and uh, this bookstore is is like I think uh, uh, a window uh, uh, from uh, another uh, from that can uh, open to some other possibilities. For, for example, so mm -hmm. yeah, um, and for sure I like. Uh, uh, I spent uh, before the pandemic for sure. I uh, spent uh, my time uh, in in bookstores. Uh, so, and as you know, uh, uh, a character uh, uh, reflects uh, a little part of of the author. So that's the reason why uh, this uh, bookstore is so important in my novel. Yeah, I don't think that Mina made a lot of money from her bookstore. <laughs> 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 no. she, 
she lent she lent books to uh, to kids and she uh, and she you know they could come in and sit and and uh, read in the bookstore it made me th it just occurred to me that it's a parallel with uh, we have this uh, Lawrence Ferlinghetti who just just mm -hmm. passed away at 101 and that was a founding principle of the City Lights bookstore in in San Francisco it was mm -hmm. it was unique among bookstores at the time people were welcome to come in and sit down and read and and hang around as long as they wanted to. And that was like Mina's bookstore, I think. Oh, thank you. Oh, A beautiful impressive. thing about that as well was that she also had a very sympathetic uh, landlord. Uh, yeah. That was one of that was one of the pleasant, another of the pleasant things in the novel. But I uh, and uh, let me see, we we probably have just a couple of minutes because I'm asking you, I'm just going to say something. There's an extremely warm relationship between Kareem and his mother uh, that really uh, touched me very, very, very profoundly. Oh. And I have a suspicion uh, <laughs> that that is either uh, uh, expressing the deep love that he feels for his mother. I think now on the opposite, this is, I know it's, it's uh, the definitely maybe the, the expression because I'm um, feeling guilty, you know, uh, 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 I don't have the, the occasion to, to see or to chat with my uh, mother uh, face to face because she she's in Africa, she's in Togo. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I create this relationship between Karim and uh, his mother in the novel. Uh, uh, to, to give to myself the, the chance to, to be a little more closer to my mother, okay. you know? And so, and yeah. And, That's uh, fine too. That's <laughs> perfectly fine. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, one um, thing that I noticed that the book is dedicated uh, yes. for Odette and Ralph, my parents. I haven't yeah. forgotten the photographs or the white dress. And exactly. in the novel, there's a, oh, yeah. there's oh, a, yeah. there's a Karim's mother uh, who's photographed in a yeah. white dress. A little so I thought that was, I also yeah. thought that was very touching. Yeah, a little autobiographical reference for sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I and take I this up. Is, okay, go ahead, Howard. You were saying something. Okay, so it's, it's it's nice the way the. The, the other photographer like wants to photograph her again in the same white dress mm -hmm. years later. And she's just as beautiful. That's right. Well, I'm just taking this opportunity again to remind you uh, that the book is, uh, is available. And uh, if you go into the chat, you will see uh, the different links where you can certainly get the information about the book. Um, yes, you can order it from from Drawn in Quarterly. Yes, who is hosting this uh, discussion. And if when eventually we can go into bookstores again, Drawn in Quarterly. If you go in there, you just can't leave with one book. You, it's they <laughs> exactly. have their books are so well chosen. That's yeah. right. That's right. We're luck. We're lucky to have it just around the corner from our house. I am wondering if Mara would like to say something. Um, Mara, are you there? Okay, there you are. Hi. Okay. Yes, thank you. Goodness, you, you all yes. you all wrapped up very promptly there. I'm very impressed. Um, once more, thank you, thank you everyone for joining us here tonight. Thank you, Crystal, for helping at Mwenzi Press to organize this uh, this event. Uh, thank you, Nigel, for your wonderful, wonderful commentary and excellent moderation. Howard and Phyllis for your expertise, and Edom, thank you so much for a lovely, wonderful book, uh, beautifully emotive. Everyone, um, go read it. Do it. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. And, good. And either really you were superb, you, you have no apologies to make for your English. <laughs> None yeah. whatsoever. Absolutely. Very well done. Right, right. I'm right. sorry, I know. But thank you again for your patience with my English. Uh, uh, <laughs> good. Keep it up. You won't need to translators be... anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to be better next time. I'm trying to, I'm still working on it. Uh, 
Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot for your patience. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank, thank you, Mara, for, for, for all this. Oh, yeah. of course, it's a pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, then. Take care. Bye. Take everyone. care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>